And why was I called here? How should I know? I was just ordered to bring you... It's been a while since I was last at an FBI office. If anything happens to me, I'll make sure they know about you. Uh, oh, uh, Dr. Kimishima! You won't accept? No matter what? I refuse. I'm a doctor, not one of your little agents. You're a master surgeon who can't operate anymore. I wish I didn't have to resort to threats, Miss Kimishima. Let me remind you that you are only free on plea bargain. Uh. You still suffer from the disease you gave yourself. You don't have that many cards left to play at this point. The affected areas that were inoculated have been extracted. But please don't forget. The genes imprinted in your cells will remain with you. I'll come up with a plan too. Please, stay alive till then. <laughs> I don't have a choice, do I? Let's talk business. Here's the intel. The agency thanks you for your cooperation. Hey, Naomi. It's me, Gabe. Took you a while. Did you receive the biopsy sample? Yeah, I did. We had a patient here with the same condition. Uh, my bad feelings come true, then. Did the operation go well? Yeah, the patient made it. I called in a special surgeon. I see. And the cause of it all? Could it be an epidemic? I can't say. Like you, I'm getting a bad feeling here. Anyways, try and get over here as soon as possible. Well, all right. You're Dr. Kimishima of CIFM, right? I'm with the gossip. I hear you're helping the FBI with some difficult cases. I'm not involved. Come on, don't be like that. Is it true you can hear the dead? Why were you with the FBI today? Is it about the bombings? What a mess. The media doesn't know what discretion is. Indeed. It's as if they revel in the deaths of innocence. Dr. Kimishima, the corpse has arrived. What's with those clothes? Oh, uh, there's some camera crews outside, so I, uh... Dr. Kimishima, hey, hey, wait up! The mysterious raging bomber, the focus of public attention. When people die, they become things. But... He was cut off. Didn't he even have a chance to see his death coming? A death like this must leave you unsatisfied. All right. I'll find the malice lurking in the dark. Huh. You're late, little guy. Hurry up and get ready. That's because of your foolishness. Tell me the facts. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, the case the 
this time is the series of bombings lately. I gather this is about the raging bomber, correct? Yes, he calls his victims first and has killed three so far. A politician, an entertainer, and now an athlete. I see. And there are no clues? No wonder the FBI's panicking. Ouch. That's harsh. But I can't argue against it. This body is the former Aiden Posner, a tennis player. Since the First Lady is coming to Portland in a few days, we need this case solved ASAP. So this isn't for the people who live here? <laughs> How noble. It's not like that. It's in everyone's best interest. Huh. In any event, what do we know about the case? We have items left at the scene and his manager's testimony. We also have a record of the call before the bombing. Right. Let's check everything. We might find a clue. I'm not going to sympathize or have pity on you. But I will see that you get the farewell you deserve. Let's begin. Show me how your flame was extinguished. Is that so? So, is the bomber a magician then? Huh? According to the manager's testimony, the victim's security was perfect. How did this so-called revolutionary plant the bomb in his house, arm it, and time the explosion perfectly to kill the victim? Good question. The only thing we can say about this bomber is that the victims were killed by bombs. Let's continue investigating then. It's my job to solve cases like this. I'll be nice and give 
disgusts me. This murder is just a game to him. Sick bastard. Well, it's not like we're ones to talk. Have you forgotten our promise, little guy? Oh, right. I'm talking about the past. Sorry. So, was the voice on the phone processed at all? We've run a spectrographic analysis on the voice from the recording. It doesn't look like there's any audio manipulation being applied to the voice. Cocky bastard. I see. So that's the revolutionary's real voice, is it? If that's true, then we can tell that he's... That was a young man's voice. He also gave us an advance notice of the next bombing. He said that his next target would be... That's right, a Caucasian male. That's a little vague. No kidding. We're doing what we can to narrow down possible targets. Oh, uh, good. We don't want any more deaths from this maniac's hands. likely from the impact of the explosion. Studying the pattern of these wounds may help us determine how far the victim was from the explosion. This piece of metal is lodged in the corpse's body. This is probably because... Right. The force from an explosion can turn almost anything into a deadly projectile. We'll need to look at this later to find out just what it is, though. Hmm, what is this? There's some kind of substance on his finger. It's peculiar that it's there. Further research may tell us more. The epidermis on the hand has thickened stratum corneum. This indicates repeated application of pressure, friction, or force to this area, a condition commonly known as a callus. If I recall correctly, his occupation was... Ah, yes, he was a tennis player. This means that his dominant hand was... Right. This, along with the musculature on the arm, suggests he was right-handed. Hey, little guy. I need something looked at. Okay. This? It's a piece of steel pipe. You could find this anywhere. What do you need me to check? It was lodged in Aiden's corpse, probably propelled by the blast. I see. I'll perform a chromatographic scan on it then. Please do. Have you found anything out? There's black powder on it. It was probably used as the propellant in the explosion. Hmm, I see. If that's the case, then that piece of metal is... Yes. It's most likely part of the bomb that killed the victim. Black powder and a steel pipe. We're one step closer to finding out how this bomb was made. What's this substance, little guy? Um, give me a moment. I'd assume it's something that was carbonized by the blast. Huh. No, wait. What's the matter? Well, this isn't soot or a remnant of something that had been burned. Then what is it? Uh, if I were to make a decision based on what I see here, it's carbon dust. Carbon dust? Why would something like that be on the victim? Uh, I thought you'd ask that, but, well, I don't have a clue. Tell me why they hired you again. Hey, people don't just run into carbon dust in their daily lives. Using it as a component in a bomb is unusual, too. Honestly, I just don't know. 
<sighs> oh well. Let's just keep this fact in mind for later then. Can I bother you, little guy? I want to know more about these wounds. Sure. The wounds spread in a radial pattern. Looking at the angles, it seems that they're centered on the abdomen. Hmm. In an explosion, the shockwave travels in a sphere from the point of origin. Of course, parts of the bomb and the surrounding materials are caught up in the shockwave. The wounds on the body indicate this radial pattern. If the bomb did in fact cause these wounds, the bomb must have been... Hmm, yes. It would have been very close, within a meter of the victim. In other words, the bomb was right in front of the victim when it went off. Yikes. I'd never want that to happen to me. 